Hey everybody, this is Tom Pierce, aka The Scale Nerd, and I'm here to welcome you to my first video in a series of build videos I plan on doing. And uh, our this is part one, this video part one of a series of videos on building this little guy right here. This is the Polaris Quadra Bike ATV vehicle. Uh, the kit is a resin kit that comes from a company called UFAN models in Asia. And uh, like I said, it's a resin kit. It comes uh, uh, just in a, a few bags of, of parts and uh, there's no instructions or anything to help you with figuring out how to put it together. So I thought, hey, this would be a good opportunity to do my first build video um, and kind of walk you through the steps that I took in putting this together, the order in which I put the pieces together. Uh, I'm sure there's several different ways you could do it, but I'm just going to share with you the ones that I used. Uh, in this video, again, we'll, we'll be building this resin kit. Uh, in the following videos, uh, I hope to share with you uh, the painting process, uh, the weathering, a full diorama. Obviously, like I said, UFAM Models also produces the resin figures that go with this. So there is a sniper with his rifle and a spotter and together they're riding on this little vehicle. So we'll do uh, some sort of like an Afghanistan scene uh, that will incorporate them. And so I'll, I'll take you through the whole process of the build, the painting, the weathering, the, the diorama build, uh, and hopefully something in there will help you if you decide to do a kit like this, or maybe you'll find a technique in here that's helpful to you. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll walk you through the build process I used uh, very quickly and uh, let's have some fun. Okay, so here we go. This is what you get with the UFAN kit. It uh, doesn't really come boxed, doesn't have any instructions or anything like that with it. Just a couple bags of resin parts uh, mounted on their sprue. So as we move on since there, uh, the first thing I do is go through and kind of clean up uh, many of the pieces, start breaking them off of the sprue and trimming them down, cutting, you know, get rid of the flash and uh, any excess material, um, at least uh, majority of them. I don't necessarily do every single piece, but try to get most of them ready to go so it doesn't slow me down as I'm going through the build process. So the first two pieces I put together were the main body, uh, the left and right side it comes in two halves. So I just go ahead and glue those two halves of the body together. After that, they have the skid plate and foot pads there that uh, uh, the, the rider places his feet on. So I can glue those onto the bottom. So that's what that looks like here. Then the next couple pieces I did were the seat and there's like a, a structure that goes on the back that holds the rear storage rack. So I'll add the seat in that rack next. So with those put on there, I go ahead and begin with the suspension. And this part was a little bit tricky. So they, you're, there's four pieces that come, two for the back, two for the front. There's these little pilot holes, mounting holes that, uh, that the rods, for lack of a better word, uh, will go into and then the shocks mount up into the bottom. It was kind of difficult to figure out exactly how those went in there and the fit wasn't ideal. Uh, I think one of them fit perfectly and, and the other, another one fit not too bad and a couple of them I just had a real hard time getting them to fit. So it took a little bit of modification to get them to fit in there, but basically we go ahead and set up those uh, suspension pieces in there. Then you'll see here still mounted on the sprue are the uh, right in this area right here are the two rear disc brakes. So we're mounting those on there in a second. So they got a little nub right there on that goes in this recessed hole in the uh, suspension for the uh, rear suspensions. So that's what it looks like with the two rear suspension and the disc brakes uh, added to the back end of the vehicle. Then we move on to the front. These were the ones that I had the most trouble with. Uh, so the, the front suspension parts, again, you can see uh, these little rods are supposed to go into these holes. Uh, there's not a real intuitive place where this shock mounts up into here. So it took uh, 
checking some research photographs to figure out exactly how that how that goes in. These little rods didn't reach over to the holes all the way, so I had to do a little bit of modification to get those things to connect. So there's the front suspension mounted on here now, and these are the disc brakes for the front end of it. You can see uh, it's got like the turnbuckle type uh, mounting here that goes into this slot right there, so you can actually mount the wheels at an angle if you want to for uh, steering. So this is uh, all suspension and disc brakes added on, seat mounted, rear rack on, skid plate and footrests. So then I went on ahead and started putting the fenders on. So I started out here with uh, the front fenders, two halves. They fit pretty decently, went on pretty smoothly. Um, then we have these two rear fender halves that go on the left and right side as well as these little angle iron type pieces that mount into these tabs uh, by the footrests. So uh, next piece was this uh, front kind of bumper type piece that goes across uh, the front right here. Uh, so that's got that installed now. So we've got these two stowage racks, one here for the front, another one back here for the back. Went ahead and mounted those on. So I got those on. You've got this kind of rear frame bumper type piece here that also uh, is where you have your, uh, looks like a little trailer hitch uh, recess there, as well as the tail light. Now here on the front end, you've got a little tow hook that uh, piece right here on the, still on the sprue that's going to mount right there. So we'll take a look at that. So there's the tow hook, and I've also got uh, this push bar on the front. It's kind of a bumper slash push bar that goes across the front of it with the uh, tow hook on there. Here on this clear sprue, you can see the two headlights. So I just took this picture to show you what they look like. I'm not going to install these until after I get the vehicle painted uh, for obvious reasons. I don't want to have to deal with masking and overspray and things like that. So I'll do all the painting and then add these on later on. And likewise here for the rear tail light piece, uh, I'll get all this painted and paint the inside and then mount that on later on. So this additional piece here uh, has looks to me like it, it there was two extra headlight lenses but this one in the center is for the kind of third headlight that goes on this piece right here so this is uh, all the parts for the steering so you got your handlebars and grips uh, that mount onto this piece and then there'll be a third headlight goes right there and that's the lens for it so there's the steering mechanism all uh, put together and installed on there And now we have these two little pockets here that I think you can store things in, uh, maps or whatever they needed to put down in there. So I got one installed here and I'm putting the other one on the other side. Lines up to this little tab. So this is the mostly the full uh, vehicle pretty much put together. I got the, this little roll bar uh, added on now. Uh, still need some cleanup done to it. I got some glue issues to clean up and some uh, things to file down and sand down. But overall, this is the assembly pretty much in total. I don't have the wheels on yet because I won't do those until after I paint. I find it a lot easier to paint the tires and wheels and the suspension and all that prior to uh, final assembly. Now this right here looks like a bunch of little letter, letter R's on this piece of sprue. What it actually is is each one of these is like a little ring that uh, there's 10 of them that mount in various places on the uh, on the racks that allow you to put tie downs, attach tie downs on there for tying um, different types of you know crates, ammo boxes or whatever down to the stowage racks. So the little uh, these are just little sprue connectors right here. Those will get cut off. 
And then here's the four wheels, so they still have their uh, resin sprues mounted or uh, sticking out of the side of those. So obviously I had to go and cut those off and sand those down, and we'll make sure that that area there is the bottom of the tire faces down on the ground so you won't see that uh, deformity in the tread pattern. This is something additional I bought. This does not come with a kit. This also comes from UFAN. These are some optional uh, stowage items that you can mount on the rack. So uh, it comes with uh, a couple here that I think are intended for the front, and this one here is intended for the back. I won't be using this larger rack that goes on the back uh, because that's going to be where the sniper is going to be sitting on that rear rack, and, and the spotter will be sitting on the main seat. Uh, driving the unit, but uh, I won't be able to load this stuff up on the back, so I'll save that for another project maybe in the future. But I do intend to put these two pieces here on. Of course, they're still mounted on their uh, sprue. So once I cut them off, they're going to fit something like, like this. Again, I don't glue these down yet. These are just kind of placed there uh, to give you an idea of what it's going to look like. Uh, I'll do all the painting of the unit of the vehicle as well as these individual pieces and then assemble it together later. Now this rendering here shows something that I want to do with this uh, vehicle. So this was an extra spare tire that they strapped to the front of the Polaris and this was actually a, a promotional rendering for the kit that's supposed to be coming out from uh, by you fan I haven't been able to locate anywhere that you can purchase it yet or any kind of idea when it's coming out so I decided I was going to go ahead and make my own I didn't want to wait um, so I'm going to uh, show you the steps that I took to fabricate my own spare tire unit so what I did is I took these original tires that came with the uh, Polaris kit and cut off the sprue on one of them and made a mold. So this is the, I bought the Alumalite uh, molding kit. Uh, it kind of gives you all you need to get started in, in doing your molding. I've, I've not got a lot of experience, virtually no experience in uh, making molds and pouring resin parts. So uh, this is kind of new to me. Uh, the This piece actually has, uh, a, or this uh, material has a 10 to 1 mix ratio. So for 10 parts of this rubber base, you'll add one part of this rubber catalyst. You get a working time of about 30 minutes before it starts setting. And the cure time is about 8 to 18 hours. I found that it took pretty much the full 18 hours uh, with the temperature and humidity here where I'm at. Uh, it was pretty solid right around 12, but I didn't feel it was fully cured enough to take it out of the mold until I hit closer to 18. So this is uh, the two mixes. This is the rubber latex base, or silicone, I'm sorry, silicone base. And then this is the catalyst, and that's the ratio that I mixed together. So once you get those mixed together, uh, you're ready to go. So I took a piece of plastic plumbing pipe, like drain plastic drain pipe, and cut a section out. And I have some aluminum tape that I would tape to the bottom of it and wrapped it around all the way around to kind of seal off the the floor of it here around the bottom and there's the tire that I'm going to create a duplicate of. So with my uh, molding material mixed up and ready to go I set the tire down the bottom and this is the sticky side of the tape facing up so that kind of held the tire in place as I poured the mold material in around it. Once I got that done then you end up with this right here so I make sure it covers up over the entire tire uh, and wheel assembly. The next day, once it was fully cured, I could just take my thumb and pull the tape off and just take my thumb and push into the bottom of it and pop it right up out of there. Didn't have to use any type of release agent or anything like that. Just It just comes right out of that plastic reel easily. So here's the original tire that I'm pulling out of the mold now. Uh, came out pretty easily. Obviously, it's not a complete two-piece mold, so I don't have full detail on both the front and back, but that's okay because the backside of the tire is going to be mounted up to the face of the Polaris 
vehicle, so you won't really be able to see it. But I got enough detail around the the, the top and the and the fold over edges here uh, to make a believable uh, looking piece. You can see that there's a couple, there's four cutouts in the rim of this tire of this wheel, and where those cutouts are, you're going to see these little um, bumps coming up right here, uh, and you can see one of them tore out of the mold when I was pulling that out of there, so I had to kind of fabricate one and stick it back down in there before I poured my resin uh, copy. This is the material that comes with the Luminite kit, the actual resin material. So you have two parts A and B. Um, again, now we're looking at a one-to-one -one mix ratio. So even parts of A and B. Uh, the, this is the part I didn't really like. It has a working time of two minutes. So once you mix this stuff together, uh, it starts getting hot right away. And it actually starts kind of changing color and foaming up in less than two minutes. But about when they say two minutes, they mean two minutes. So it really is not very forgiving. If you've got a large part or a complicated part, I recommend using something different. It was all I could do to get this uh, into the mold and get it spread around well and covered uh, before it starts setting up. And then uh, it actually is ready to go ahead and pop out of the mold in about 10 minutes. I like to let it sit a little bit longer just in case. So I let mine sit for about a half an hour or so, and then uh, you can go ahead and pop it out. And again, I didn't use any type of release agent at all in this. And it's, it, uh, so here, here it is, right, with the uh, resin in. And you can see that little piece of plastic that I stuck down in there to kind of simulate uh, these cutout bumps here so that I would get that same uh, shape into the mold when it released. So once a uh, half hour or so later, it's all dried and cured up, was able to pop it out. You can see that little piece of plastic popped out again, but it was stuck in the wheel, but I was able to cut that back out. So there's the finished duplicate uh, resin tire. It turned out pretty decent, especially for first crack at it. Next thing I wanted to do is deal with the straps that hold the wheel on. So I used this Milliput Superfine White. It's a two-part uh, epoxy putty. So, so here's one part, here's the other. You just kind of tear a little uh, pea-sized uh, piece off of each one of these and squeeze them together and twist them and fold them and twist them and fold them for about five minutes until you get them really mixed together as so like you would if you were mixing just regular regular epoxy glue but you're mixing putty so you want to make sure that it's mixed to the point to where it's uh, all one uniform color so this uh, putty then I put down on a piece of styrene and lay, and poured some water out on it on it the reason I do that is then I was able to take some, uh, a cylindrical object like a glue bottle or something like that and, and get it nice and wet too and roll it out like I'm rolling out with a pizza dough until I got a real thin sheet, this little small sheet of this uh, putty. And take the X-Acto knife and cut out slivers like this right here and it can wrap them around the tire. And this is something that takes, uh, I don't know, a couple hours or so before it starts drying up and setting up. And before I feel really safe with handling it too much, I like to let it sit for uh, overnight. So there's the first strap wrapped on, which goes down and goes through these cutouts of the tire. And now I've got all the rest of those on there. They still need some cleanup work done on them, but I got the basic shapes laid out uh, using the, the putty. Also went in with a exacto knife and started kind of sculpting uh, little uh, latches here or tie down buckles uh, to make it give it just a little bit more detail. And there's kind of the finished piece. I've glued a couple little pieces of real fine sprue in here uh, to start simulating the turnbuckle that uh, is looped into the strap and then it the part that's cut off there is actually what would be behind the frame or the body right here. So it kind of clips into the body and that uh, that area there. So with that being uh, completed, I want to go ahead and get primer on all this so I could give it a last good look for imperfections and areas that needed cleaned up and sanded or 
uh, bag glue joints or anything like that. So I use Tamiya uh, liquid surface primer. Uh, my airbrush of choice is the Wada Eclipse HPCS. Uh, this surface primer is an oil-based uh, enamel, so just kind of mix it. Uh, I don't know, I'd say probably roughly one-to-one uh, -one with, uh, with a thinner, with an enamel thinner. And I run about 25 pounds air pressure through a large compressor. Uh, some people... You know, there's a lot of different choices that you can use for air sources for your airbrush. Personally, I like having a, a large compressor so it doesn't run very often. It actually only kicks on once every few days or so and uh, for a few minutes, and then I'm good to go for quite a while. So here we have uh, the full vehicle and the wheels and the stowage and the spare tire all completed and primed and ready to go on to the next step which will be painting this is the brand new unit up here kind of showroom shot uh, that gives you an idea of what the colors that i'm going to have to be go going for will be down here is another one actually live in the field with a little bit of dirt and weathering showing up on there so you get an idea of what the terrain and the different type of effects i'm going to have to simulate on it uh, for, from a weathering standpoint obviously it's not uh, a tank uh, it's not going to have a lot of rust on it and abuse. It's a relatively new vehicle. It's in a dry environment. So uh, it'll be mostly light dust and sand and that type of thing on, on the, in terms of weathering. So that's pretty much the build process all the way through primer, ready to paint. So next video, uh, tend to come out with real soon, uh, will be live video. And I'll go ahead and start showing me you uh, the actual process of me painting it doing getting all the painting done and uh, dig into the weathering process for a while then we'll move on to a uh, a third video for the two figures that are going to be going on here and ultimately the last video will be uh, creating the di full diorama and taking the project to completion okay so there you have it. There's the complete build process of this 135th scale resin kit by UFAN model, the Polaris Quadra bike. Uh, I hope that you learned something or that it was helpful to you if you decided you want to try to build this kit. Uh, maybe some techniques in there that you're going to see, probably more so in the videos to come as we get into the painting and the weathering. We build the figures and do the diorama. I hope to be able to share some, some techniques that will be helpful to you. So come back and visit me again. Check me out on Facebook at the Scale Nerd page. Uh, look for videos on YouTube from me. And uh, hopefully I can show you something that will help you or at least give you some enjoyment and watching the processes that I, techniques that I try out. So talk to you later. And until next time, happy building.